So, I was showing you a picture of uh, a report conducted uh, in 2007 and supported by the Commonwealth, by Katie Abitor and other colleagues, where they reported uh, seniors' uh, medication error or other errors in which seniors in seven different countries experienced. And from the graph, we can see that 28% of seniors that were surveyed at 2006, when the study was actually conducted, reported that uh, there was error, medical error, a wrong disclosure, or a lab test error in their healthcare delivery. A the majority of the times, it increased their cost, or some of them were seriously harmed. And um, there's also other studies in Canada here too that also reported where 7.5% of adverse events have uh, led to complications readmissions, and although a little fraction of them led to deaths, but the most important thing is that they are preventable. And the big recommendation that came out from this report was that majority of the care were not delivered in a collaborative manner. So either the doctor was in a silo trying to do the diagnosis, send it to the nurse, the nurse didn't really understand what was going on, they sent it back to the physio, and so that back and forth movement made the patient confused, some of the patient who has drop out of care and further complicated the level of disease that they had. So, the learning objectives for today is that by the end of this lesson, everybody here will be able to have an idea and define what is interprofessional collaboration as it relates to healthcare because it relates to other disciplines too. And also, you'll be able to list and explain the four competency domains of interprofessional collaboration. So in Canada, there is a body that addressed this issue after the uh, seminar study in 2000, where it was made, uh, made recommendations that every hospital and every health facility should ensure they report critical events, adverse events, so that they can learn from it and better improve the care. And there will be a group activity as usual. And in summary, we'll just sum up the benefits of interprofessional collaboration. So what is interprofessional collaboration? Sorry, I already put the answer there. So as the name sounds already, it's a process of developing and maintaining effective interprofessional working relationships with the learners, with the practitioners, and more importantly with the families and patients, because the majority of the healthcare system leave them out. We try to deliver healthcare while not being conscious and sensitive, not being considered that the patient also has to be part of the plan, because you can do all these sophisticated care plans but by the time you try to tell all your love to the patient, you just reject it and all your efforts are wasted. Communities are, they use that to optimize the health outcomes, prevent complications, and make the healthcare system more efficient. And that was adapted from the National Interprofessional Competency Framework, which is a body in Canada that regulates and makes sure that uh, every healthcare system has some competencies and needs to be met to be able to work collaboratively and improve the healthcare system. So, they came up with six domains of which a healthcare professional working in an interprofessional collaborative environment should have. Why well, condensed two? Because I felt they went together and I made it four. So, the first one is interprofessional communication, which is highly important. 
So uh, the body recommends that every healthcare professional should not work in the silos, but they should come together and make sure that the communication has been effective so that it can prevent errors and the flow can be more efficient and the care delivered can be at high quality level. And more importantly, patient and family centered care. So the patient is the ultimate customer of the healthcare system. And it will not make any sense if you don't involve them or their family in some situation in trying to address their own care. So like I said, no matter how you try to design the best available care, if you don't involve them in it, it's liable to fail. And collaborative leadership and conflict resolution. resolution. So because majority of a series of healthcare professionals are coming together, there has to be power decentralization and things like that. So they have to work collaboratively, work together, understand uh, the leadership functions and know how to resolve their differences, all in the best interest of the patients, and they have to drop all their egos. Then that ties down to the last one, which is role clarification and team functioning. So when they get together in a room, try to devise a care plan for the patient, what's the next line of action, they have to clearly introduce themselves, clearly introduce their role and boundaries so that they don't ensure they get into each other's way, and the team will function better, and the patient will receive the best available care in an efficient and effective manner. Bingo. Group activity. So I'll be sharing uh, three cases. I'll put this back there. Of where uh, I, ha I, I just made some scenarios of situations that could happen in the healthcare environment. And I want you guys in a group of three just to identify which competency or framework would have been used to address the scenario. So, just find it. One group, this table. So, you'll be, you'll be addressing case one. This table will be addressing case two. And this will be addressing case three. I kept all the cases together so you can have a look if you're done with yours. So we can discuss it together. So I'll give you two minutes just to have a quick look and think which of competencies on the board could have been used to address the scenario. Two minutes, and you can look into other cases. <laughs> And you can have more than one competence that can be at play, so feel free, it's not a must if it's into one. One minute more. One, three, four, five, four. Yeah. One, three, four, five, four. Thirty seconds. Which one comes together to make two? <laughs> <laughs> Are we all good? Okay. So we can let's get back together and go through it. So group one uh, that has the case one. What did you guys have and what do you think the competency that can have help? Can we say the case up? Yeah, you can say the case up. So it's X-ray technician mislabeled the X-ray films of an accident and uh, he mislabeled left and right hmm. and the orthopedic surgeon amputated the leg. One. So what do you think? Uh, <laughs> so we have there's trouble of communication. Exactly. Sure. Spot on. Yeah, and I don't know patient patient centered care if both of them were centered at the patient exactly. instead of doing what they are only exactly. doing, they so might that, have yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So you just mentioned I think at that case, so I just devised that scenario myself. Actually, they do a core real life some of them. So it's, it's more around interprofessional communication. There was poor communication between the clinical assistant that had to do the x-ray film and radiologist and actually the surgeon that would do uh, the surgeon because he didn't be confirmed and things like that. Uh, so good two, case two. Um. Oh. Patient and family-centered care. Perfect. Exactly, that's just it. So, uh, the patient was an accident victim. He's unconscious, he couldn't obviously speak for himself. And the physician, because the family members brought the patient to the hospital, 
they should have consulted before they actually transfused the blood to the patient just to know uh, and ascertain if they could actually take the blood. But they didn't do that and you know, it led to legal challenges and the hospital had to pay severely for that. If not, the licenses might be withdrawn. And group three. Case three. During a patient chart review for a diabetic patient, a nurse, physician, podiatrist, and pharmacist go together in a room. But they seem not to agree on how to proceed with the next steps of the patient's treatment. So we discuss further and we, we think that it's not only interprofessional communication, but also collaborative leadership and conflict resolution, as well as role clarification. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they go together in a room, there is that power imbalance. Who, is the, who wants the patient? That's always the perception. I own the patient, not you. They can't clarify the role. The team can function very well. And that time was just wasted. So, uh, to sum up, I'll just tell you the benefits of interprofessional collaboration. It leads to better team, they work together, and it's more effective and efficient for the healthcare system for the patients. And better teams will obviously translate to better care because the patient is receiving the best available care in a timely manner, is culturally sensitive, and uh, is effective and efficient. And this will also lead to good uh, satisfaction survey from the patient. And we can build a more efficient and effective health system across the globe and across the world. And in Canada, uh, most majority of the healthcare system are moving into these interprofessional collaborative models. And thank you very much. So the references. Thank you.